Hello guys and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2. Today we're going to be starting a new Mortal Empires campaign playing as Ikiklaw and Clan Scryer. Big thanks to you guys who voted in the latest poll for this campaign. I'm really personally looking forward to it. This is going to be a world domination. We're going to take every single settlement on the map and my plan is to spread corruption all over the world as well. That is going to make it much more difficult in terms of public order, but I thought it would be really cool to do that. So let's have a look at the Skaven race attributes. Skaven Under Empire. Establish warrens in any settlement, undermining your enemy's progress or hide in plain sight while growing your own empire. Food. Maintain food supplies to gain growth and other bonuses and to avoid starvation penalties. And then we have Skaven Corruption is a detriment to local public order, but allows you to spawn additional units of clan rats to fight in local battles. Then we have the faction effects. We have access to the Clan Scryer Forbidden Workshop. We get plus 20% research rate, which is very, very nice indeed. Stacking that with steel technology would be really, really good. Uh, then we get plus two loyalty for new recruits, which is nice. And then we have minus 40% construction costs for engineering buildings, which will allow us to get some more of the unique units that Ikut Claw works well with. Then we have the Lord Effect, starts the campaign with a Warp Storm Doom Rocket, which is pretty awesome, basically a big old nuke. Uh, then we have the minus 50% upkeep for Warp Plock Gisales, Rattling Guns and Warp Fire Thrower Weapon Teams. Uh, that's in the Lord's Army only though. And then we have plus two recruit rank for all Skaven weapon team units. The additional starting units, we get some Doom Flayers, we get some Rattling Guns, and we also get some Warp Lock Gisales, which are basically like long range snipers. So there we go. Uh, we're going to do the campaign on very hard battle and campaign difficulty. And just to let you guys know, I do have the mods on once again for reducing army upkeep. Um, when you have subsequent armies and also the no penalties from terrain um, so just so you guys know and that's mainly to help with the longevity of the campaign it's more of a late game thing that it comes into effect also those effects apply to the AI as well um, so generally we are fighting more armies because the AI can have more I've never played as Skaven before in Warhammer 2 so this is going to be a really, really interesting campaign for me. Let's see what our advisor has to say. Supreme Warlock Master, your knowledge of science and sorcery is unsurpassed. This is your chance to experiment and make the world your playground of diabolical weaponry. Perhaps the Astalians could be your first test subjects. They may well be harboring a wealth of warpstone, and will surely offer little resistance to a carefully aimed doom rocket. To the north, the Bretonian dukedoms fight for honor and chivalry, yet they have a soft underbelly which could easily be exploited by scryers under empire. Many greenskins dwell in the mountains north of Tilea. They do not know it yet, but both they and the Tileans could prove useful fodder in furthering your research. Your workshop awaits you, my lord. Let the power of Warpstone be felt by all through the explosive experiments of Ikit Claw. So we start at Skaven Blight, and it's actually a really nice position for expanding in pretty much all directions from the start of the campaign. But that can also be a bad thing because we can't really corner ourselves into the edge of the map, which means that if somebody ends up declaring war on me um, and I don't have any armies on one side of my empire, then I'm going to be in trouble. But let's look at, look at how they play. So the Skaven can lurk beneath any settlement or ruin, growing their empire by either occupying regions or establishing undercities beneath them. I'm really going to look into this undercities thing. I think it's pretty cool. Left undetected for too long, their malevolent scheming can result in hordes of vermin rising up to corrupt the land or assault in illustrious cities without warning. Clan Scryer are also able to use any of their undercities to assemble a Doom Sphere, a, mass, a weapon of mass destruction with potential to level an entire settlement. Wow. 
Okay, Forbidden Workshop. The Forbidden Workshop lets Transcryer go crazy with their ideas. By spending warp fuel and food, they can develop and upgrade the most powerful war machines, weaponry and weapon teams known to Skaven kind, including the devastating Doom Rockets. Food. Um, Skaven factions require a stockpile of food, each army consuming an amount of food per turn. Food can uh, may be acquired from battles, by sacking settlements, and through certain buildings. Um, Skaven Corruption. The Skaven spread corruption wherever they settle, lowering public order over time, but giving additional uses of the menace below army ability during battles fought within the local province. So we are going to probably spread corruption initially. If the public order becomes too much, then I might have to slow it down a bit. But I think buildings and stuff also increase corruption, so it's going to be hard to manage. Either way, uh, here we are at Skaven Blight, looking very cool. Uh, definitely going to upgrade that immediately. And we already have a unique building here, the Warpstone Telescope, which gives us extra research rate and Skaven Corruption. Okay, that's interesting. We also get food from that. And then when we upgrade it, we get Winds of Magic Power Reserve for all armies and extra recruit rank for artillery units and all characters. Wow. Okay. It's a pretty nice bonus. Um, that's. I was going to say that's all of the landmarks, but there's more. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have the. What is this here? Council Chamber of the Thirteen. Extra public order faction wide. Very nice. Um, public order plus thirteen. Wow. Okay, that's going to be really useful uh, to maintain basically scale of corruption without having that penalty. Uh, then we have the extra Lord Recruit rank, faction-wide, extra tax rate, faction-wide, and untainted in all regions. Okay. And then global recruitment capacity, plus one, faction-wide. And then we have the Shattered Tower, which is cooldown after expanding the Under Empire, minus five turns. Um, scale of corruption, plus 13. And scale of corruption in adjacent provinces, plus six. Okay. So I'm not sure, because it's like, we've got untainted buildings, but we've also got Skaven Corruption buildings. Let's have a look at some of these other buildings. We've got the clan pit there. Uh, do we need a clan pit? I don't think we do, because we have the main stuff coming out of this building. Uh, what does this also allow us to get? The warp fire throwers, warp lock, chisels, and rattling guns. Okay, so if we wanted storm vermin, we'd still have to build this, but we can already get clan rats with shields and clan rats with spears with shields um then we have the hidden lair here which gives us assassins and night runners and stuff the gutter runners uh, and that's going to be an eshin sorcerer death runners and eshin triads okay cool uh weapons dump warp grinders warp fire throwers okay so this is like the long range stuff and bombardiers cool um, I, I do have to go through all of these by the way guys because I have never played like a full playthrough of Skaven. I think the only time I've ever played Skaven is like when the game originally came out like way back when before Mortal Empires even existed and I messed around for like a few turns with Clan Moors but that is it like that's all my knowledge uh, otherwise I basically haven't played at all. Um, so Construction Cavern. Uh, this gives us extra income and unlocks technologies. Okay. Um, that gives us the war Warlock Engineers and extra Skaven Corruption. The Play Core Catapult is pretty important. We're going to want those. The Warp Forge is nice. That's going to give us Warp Lightning Cannons and Doom Flayers. Uh, so that gives us extra Research Rate. And then even more Research Rate and extra Hero Recruit Rank. Nice. Okay. And that gives us Doom Wheels. Uh, the Pox Cauldron. Plague Monks and Plague Priest. Uh, this spreads Skaven Corruption massively, but also increases public order. Cool, okay. So it may be worth having those public order buildings. And we have the Growth Vats, which gives us Rat Ogres and, of course, the Hell Pit Abomination. Cool. And also income generated, nice. The Spelunking Holes. Uh, minus 50% penalty due to presence or lack of corruption. Uh, okay, that's going to be useful in most cities, actually. Just to allow me to have a lot of corruption without the penalty. So we'll have to start building these. Um, then we will... 
probably have to look at these as well. The Rattling Warrens give casualty replenishment rate and growth. Okay, so that's those kinds of buildings. Then we got extra income from all buildings and all regions in the province. That's cool. Cannot be constructed in minor settlements. Uh, then we have the Rubbish Pit. That's untainted, but income generated. Extra local recruitment capacity and re minus recruitment cost. Then we have the Temple of the Horned Rat up here. Starts at the Taskmaster's platform, which gives extra public order but increases corruption. Okay, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to go for a corruption playthrough then, if we can build those um, public order buildings. Yeah, so we'll basically have to put it to a point where the public order outmatches a 100% Skaven Corrupt. Um, so let's have a look at Skaven Blight. Um, if I can, there we go. Um, that's causing... So mo five public order penalty from corruption, and this is 100% corrupt. So that's actually not that bad at all. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, we'll definitely just work off corruption. That's cool. So I probably want to get this building, the Rattling Warrens, I'm thinking. Mainly because it unlocks technology. And... Yeah, we definitely need technology. <laughs> there's no there's no technology we can do right now. So this will give us extra local recruitment capacity in all provinces. Oh, extra recruit rank for clan rats will be nice early on. Extra casualty replenishment rate is perfect. Yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, we'll definitely go this way. Although, what does this do? Devious plans is... These are missile units, aren't they? Okay. That's fine. So that one's for missile units. And this moves on to plague monks. Okay, what about these ones? It's for storm vermin. In the center. Um, that's Oh, that public order one, for sure. We definitely want that, 100%. We're going to need the taskmaster's platform. That's the abominations. That goes towards help at abominations. And this is weapon teams. Okay, so I think we're going to start with ferocious plans. So we'll grab the rattling warrens. Where are these other buildings, though, that unlock technology? So that's the construction tavern, or cavern, sorry. It's the den of secrets. That's the arsenal. Um, Taskmaster's platform's the one we want. Yeah, we'll grab that. Okay, uh, how long is that going to take to build? So Only one. So we'll be able to start technology next turn. Which is good. Okay, let's have a look at our objectives. Because I have I don't know like the long campaign victory objectives for Skaven. So we have maintain at least 50% of the following corruption in specified provinces. Oh, cool. So you actually have to have Skaven corruption in order to win the campaign. Interesting. Destroy the following factions. Talson, Carcassonne, Bordelot. Irish of Sartosa, Reichland, Caron, Van Angren, and Sylvania. So that's not actually too bad. That's all old world. That's yeah, that's actually quite easy in terms of factions destroyed. Sometimes, like when it requires you to destroy the elves, it can be a really real pain in the ass. Um And we gotta control any 17 of the following settlements. Cool. Maintain a hundred. That I think the long campaign victory is actually quite easy. Okay. Um, we could have a look at the chapter one uprisings from below. So we got to occupy, loot, raise, or sack four different settlements, of course. From the bowels of the earth, the Skaven rise, like an inescapable tide of pestilent destruction. It is their desire to reclaim the world from the surface dwellers, and they will do so in an unending tide of skittering claws and jagged teeth. The other thing I forgot to mention is I really want to get a massive store of Warp Storm Doom Rockets and just nuke the world. <laughs> It'd be really fun. Um, this is Cause for Thought, so that's Research 2 Technologies, Win 3 Battles, Reach Rank 5 with Wicked Claw, Maintain 4 Units, and Form Any Ritual from the following category, Workshop. Okay. That's the objectives. Diplomacy, let's go have a look at this. We're quite friendly with the Beastmen, but we can't trade with the Beastmen, so that's kind of pointless. Technology we've already looked at. Rights. What rights do we have? The Dominating Scheme. 
So food generated extra uh, three per turn. That's cool. Extra growth in all provinces, extra public order and uh, recruitment costs. That's fine. 13th scheme, extra diplomatic relations, extra loyalty, uh, hero action success chance and hero chance. That's cool. And then army ability. What is this? Minus 44% magic resistance. Okay. That could have a good effect with certain abilities, I reckon. And we have the Pestilence Scheme. So a unique Plague Priest Hero capable of spreading a deadly plague to a foreign settlement will be summoned at your faction's capital. Okay. And then we have the Scheme of Doom, which is a unique Warlock Engineer Hero capable of targeting a foreign settlement to either establish an undercity or cause a catastrophic earthquake there. Will be summoned at your faction's capital. <laughs> Okay, Doom Engineer. Fantastic. Um, what is this? This one's just a Warlock Engineer. Alright, let's continue through. Skaven Corruption Map Mode. Okay, that's all that is. And then we have the Forbidden Workshop here as well. As the main power source of the Forbidden Workshop, warp fuel is critical to our research. When Warlock Masters win battles, or if engineers successfully act against settlements, there is a chance to receive warp fuel canisters. Okay. We'll have to keep an eye out for the warp fuel then. Uh, we do have some warp fuel already. So we can basically upgrade stuff as we wish. This is Doom Flayers. Oh, you can upgrade all of them differently. Okay. Interesting. We're going to upgrade Doom Rockets. We can build Doom Rockets. It might be worth building a second one. But what does this do? Extra winds of magic power starting amount for all armies. Increased storage limit. Um, casualty replenishment rate plus 10% after using a Doom Rocket in battle. <laughs> okay. Um, extra chance to recover warp fuel after using a Doom Rocket. And that could be useful. 25% um, chance to build an extra Doom Rocket. Okay. Um, then we have... Doom rockets will cause an additional damage over time. Then we have the weapon teams, so that's endless drum. Uh, replenishes ammunition if ammunition is below 80%. Wow, so they never run out of ammunition? Blimey. Uh, Radi scopes. That's extra ability range and extra armor piercing damage. Okay. And we've got extra melee attack for warp grinders. And then. Missile damage warp fire throwers. Doom, doom wheels. Just bonuses for doom wheels. That's fine. When these are like fully upgraded, it's going to be insane. And develop upgrades within this panel to gain additional benefits. Unique regiments of renown. Exclusive to the Forbidden Workshop. So that's like items that we get. And then we get the regiment of renown at the end. Okay, that's really cool. <laughs> I'm actually well impressed with this. <laughs> I've never looked into it, <laughs> and yeah. I think we're going to start by looking at the Doom Rocket stuff. Um, the Toxic Waste Salvage will be useful, I think. So 100% chance. That costs two as well. So that's going to be really useful. And then we will... Maybe do... Let's have a look. Wins of Magic Power Reserve. I might just save the rest, actually. Because this will just be useful in general after, for reclaiming warp fuel. I assume we get, like, one for every Doom Rocket we use, or two, maybe. I'm not sure really what I'm going to want here, but this seems pretty good. Depends if we ever get through the ammo. I don't know how quickly they use up their ammunition. Because if they use it up pretty quick, then that may be worth it. I'm wondering if what I can actually recruit. Looks like just clan rats and stuff. Okay. Might be worth getting some Skaven Slave Slingers. Just for a little bit of range capability. What can I do here? I can expand the Under Empire, or we can steal technology. Well, that does cost money to expand the Under Empire. 
And I probably don't want to do it at Tabaro since I'm probably just going to take it. But we could potentially steal technology. That would reduce research time by another 20% for 30, or for three turns, sorry. Uh, we won't get that bonus for this turn, but next turn that will come into effect. So that would be good. Also, the other thing we're doing that is it gives us extra um, skill points from experience. So that's good. Uh, we may as well go towards Scorch, I guess. Yeah, we'll grab uh, Scorch. That's a breath attack, though. I'm not sure how good that is. There's a long, thin, expanding tear shape, yeah. I'm not sure how strong that is. It might be better to just upgrade Warp Lightning. Warp Lightning can be really good. Let's just upgrade Warp Lightning. And... Let's have a look at the regiments right now. So we have the ones that require us to get a certain level. There's actually a lot of them. Wow. And then we have the ones that we can get from the workshop as well. <laughs> I, I'm Like I said, I'm, I'm well impressed <laughs> by the amount of stuff that we can get. Uh, we won't use food for that. That's kind of pointless. We'll just jump on in and we'll have a go with uh, some of our new toys. Um, probably not going to waste the uh, warp, uh, warp stone rocket, whatever it is. <laughs> that would be less than ideal. Okay. So what do we have in terms of spells? This is a vortex ability. Nice. Huge stationary area of effect. Wait, is it? It says it's Vortex. Oh, I guess it's uh, probably like a Pit of Shades then, maybe. Normally the Vortex moves. Oh, <laughs> that was kind of annoying. I got Warp Lightning and we've got Howling Warp Cow. Oh, I do need to look at the skills that Ikit Claw has because it looks like he's got his own magic, which means we don't need to put the Engineer into his army. Um, right, uh, may as well just have these in front. And then we will have the Skaven Slaves either side. And the Clan Rats here. They can run forwards. Have our Doom Flayers on the flanks. Let's just have a quick look at these units. Of course, our Clan Rats, the Skaven Slaves. Uh, then we have our Warp Locked Zales. Basically, snipers. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be the guy in front, would you? <laughs> okay, over to these guys. Basically, mini guns. Very, very cool. And then we have over here our Doom Flayers. Very cool indeed. I love the variants on the units. Some of them have like armor and masks and stuff like that. Very cool. Off we go. Already firing away. I didn't, didn't actually kill any with that first volley. Uh, we killed a few there. They're definitely doing plenty of damage though. I'm going to get these to go around the flank so we can kind of charge into the back of them, I guess. I'm going to end up trying out the, well, not the warp lightning, the, what are they called? Brass orb. I'm going to get both these to hit the spearmen. <laughs> Those gunners are so cool. Alright, let's try this out. We'll put it there. See what happens. 
Okay, it does stay in the same position. That's good to know. Put down some warp lightning here. <laughs> oh, warp lightning is so good. Okay, I've got to move these up. I'm also paying attention to how much ammo these use and whether or not it's like worth it. Right, I'm going to turn these in. And we'll just start blasting these swordsmen. <laughs> Yeah, this has a crazy low cooldown as well, doesn't it? What's the ranged attack on this? Oh, cool. It's like, um... It's like the Dwarven units. <laughs> I, I am loving this already. <laughs> <laughs> so much destruction. So much destruction. It is fantastic. Alright, we'll end it there. Yeah, he can get a lot of kills with his weapon, can't he? And also, of course, the magic. I guess that helps. Damn. Plenty of kills for those weapon teams, that's for sure. I'm going to have fun using those. I'm, I'm probably going to make, like, the Storm Vermin uh, Warp Lock warp locks at um, Giselle's front lines. Kind of like I again do with the dwarves. I think they're going to play it very similarly to the dwarves. Uh, what is this? Occupy settlement level. Oh! That is crazy. You can use food to increase the settlement level? That is crazy. Take for so, we can loot and occupy, we can sack it, we can expand the Under Empire. I guess this kind of like puts a, a, the Under Empire in and then leaves the settlement kind of like sacking. Our Under Empire bigger, stronger. I think I'm just going to loot and occupy. More lab nests here. But I am kind of tempted to put the settlement level on. Mm, maybe when I have more food we can do that in the future. Okay, so we'll definitely fix that up. And we're gonna get Root Marcher. Okay. Oh, yeah, we need to have a look at his skills. So he can, in fact, ride a Doom Wheel, which is very cool. Um, he can get a Doom Flare as well sooner. Sneaky, tricksy. Not many, like, abilities at the top, which is interesting. He's only got one quest as well. And power overload. Minus 10% cooldown to all spells. I guess that's like a permanent thing. Extra loyalty for Warlock Masters faction-wide. And extra hero capacity. Um, then there's the extra chance to acquire warp fuel after battle. Nice. We should probably head towards that ASAP. Um, the very latest thing. Extra concentrated flame ammunition. Increased range and anti-large. Cool. Honestly, it might be better to just keep Ica Claw off a mount. For most of the time, unless that does affect the Doom Well in the future. Um, the extra recruit rank for Doom Flares and Doom Wheels is very cool. And the brass orb upgrade. Cool. Um, that's power armor. 10% physical resistance straight off the bat. Double insulation is kind of bad. Run and then rush or second wind serum. Can we get both of those? I think you'd probably have to choose one or the other, right? Unless you can have both, which is really cool. That's uh, extra armor piercing damage, and that's uh, replenishes hit points. Okay, let's have a look at some of the magic. The Warp Lightning, Musk of Fear, minus leadership and then minus melee attack. Uh, that stops people from moving. Darling Warp Gale, then we have the Death Frenzy, extra melee attack and weapon damage for friendly allies. wonder if you can make that AoE. And then Scorch, of course. And then we have Cracks Call, which is a wind attack. Very cool. 
uh, Flensing Ruin, Earthing, Magical Reserve, and Unlimited Power, which is basically Arcane Conduit. Okay, then we have Buffs 2. Uh, clan Rats. This one is Night Runners and Gutter Runners. This one's Weapon Teams. Uh, Storm Vermin, Death Runners, Plague Monks, and Eshin Triads. Uh, Rat Ogres and Hellfire Abominations and Engineering Skill. So I assume we'll pro probably want to go for Blastmaster and Engineering Skill for Ichic Claw. Uh, what about the bonus abilities? So Gutter Wise, extra range. Okay, nice. And Speed is useful. So they can re uh, reposition. But that's for Gutter Runners and Night Runners. Uh, warp Smart. Uh, bonus versus Infantry. Okay, that's for... Even weapon teams, doom wheels, and play core catapults. Does that affect their missiles? I guess it might do. We get 12% missile damage anyway. And then mutagenic elixirs. That's for rat ogres, help it, abominations, and plague monks. Okay. And I think this is more or less standard. Looting settlements, ambush success chance, untainted scaven corruption. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. I think uh, Lightning Strike is going to be actually quite important for my Skaven Lords, just because uh, they don't do too well in 2v1s. Oh, this is Global Recruitment, but it takes two turns. You can Global Recruit. That's cool. I <laughs> did not know. Uh, so, Stance Stalking, Chance of Ambushing, any army this force attacks. I think all the stances are otherwise the same. I'm just going to grab some Skaven slave uh, Slingers. Yes, yes. Alright, commandment available, it's Skaven Blight. You get extra public order and untainted. Uh, minus 10% construction costs and growth. Um, and minus recruitment cost and local recruitment capacity and food generators and Skaven corruption increase. The extra food is probably worth it early on. I don't care too much about the public order and untainted at the moment. The other thing I could look at doing is the minus 10% construction cost because uh, we're going to be upgrading the settlements soon and I'm going to have more slots to use. So having that in place I think is more important first and then we'll go towards exploitative planning afterwards. All right, that's everything done for the turn. So that was quite a discovery of new mechanics. Let's move on and start using them all. I don't know whether or not I'm going to be able to attack Estalia like straight away. I feel like it's going to be quite difficult. We've got the Beastmen already coming into our lands. I'm I'm hoping that the <laughs> Beastmen don't attack us. That would be a little awkward. Speed things up. We, don't, we haven't really discovered many people, so our interns are very quick. We've got the right unlock, the dominating scheme. Uh, that gives extra growth, extra public order. I think this is worth popping immediately. Um, it lasts for five turns, but costs 3,000 though, which is basically all our money. I uh, probably want to save our money actually for now. Uh, why is the public order going up so much? Uh, it's mainly military presence, I guess. Oh, the lack of corruption increases public order. Oh, okay. That is interesting. Right, I wonder if just pushing towards this and then warp fire doom rocketing or warp storm doom rocketing Megareta would be a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to move up here. I might just put my Warlock Engineer in the army anyway for now. And we'll move on as far as we can. We'll recruit some more. Oh, you can only global recruit when you're in a settlement. Okay, that's good to know. Get ferocious plans on the way. And then we'll head towards Driven by Hunger. I'm not actually sure I'm going to have enough men to, uh, like, or, or rats, I guess they are, to attack Magritte. What's the garrison like? Oh, it's pretty trash. 
Okay. Blend the turn. Maybe they'll get baited out by the fact that we have um, a lot of Skaven slaves. Like that will make our strength pretty pretty low. I could have potentially stayed in this element for a couple turns and, and built up the army there. That may have been a better idea. But I think we're just gonna like scave and slave spam, honestly. Unless I want to attack this turn. Hmm. Not sure. I think it's gonna be difficult. Maybe we want to go into ambush stance and just kill Lupio's army initially. Hmm, I guess attacking sooner than later is a good idea though. With the magic, we should be okay. That's what I'm thinking. Let's see. <laughs> we'll just go and attack him and we'll find out. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of swordsmen and a lot of spearmen as well. I could just stay where I am and basically increase the uses of the menace below and let him attack me at the end of the turn. That could be the way to do it. I'm not sure I really have enough like ranged forces though to do it that way. Could be kind of suicidal. Let's maintain the siege. Get some siege towers going. Can I recruit from here? No. Okay. See if he attacks me. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Let's get ourselves some recruits. And the reason this is a good thing is because they'll be much more clumped up and so we can probably warp storm beam rocket them to death. Okay. This is actually going to be a tough old battle. There's always been a reason that I never really liked Skaven and it's because their initial army is very very weak. But if we play this right, we could do a lot of damage. And we do actually have a nice hill uh, that we can work from. They don't have any artillery. We have the Warp Block Gisales, so we'll see. Warp Block Gisales. Rattling gun. I'm probably going to keep these in like a square ready, ready. formation. Same with these. They can rotate easier. Put the Skaven Slaves kind of either side. We're going to want to keep these generally bunched up. And this thing is going to just kind of chill behind, I guess, for the time being. Or maybe we can put them in front initially. Okay, um, we do have two casts of the old uh, Doom Lightning or whatever it is. Start deployment, start the battle, speed things up. Okay. Okay, that's good. Kill the Pistoliers, I'm happy about that. How big is this? Not actually that big. Rattling gun. But they are going to attack me one army at a time, which is actually really good for us. Also, what's nice about my Skaven slingers here is that they're going to finish off any units that were damaged, basically. Three 
Have these just run into the back of them. <coughs> okay, cool. Alright, we're warp lining them as well. And then Dean players can go ahead and get into their crossbows. Alright, Lupio's having a go with Ikit Claw, but I think Ikit's kind of winning. It might be worth just moving my gunners back and we can shoot him to death. Okay, awesome. Right, we're gonna wanna probably just get into those crossbows ASAP. We're shooting Lupio to death. Good. Gonna kill that unit on the left. Great. <laughs> Say goodbye to Lupio. <laughs> He's gone. Okay. Uh, next up, the swordsman. We'll just hit those. That's good. And again, my doom flayers to kill off the swordsman here. Probably a good idea to just hit that. If I don't actually have to use the warp stone rocket, then I won't. The warp storm rocket. There is still quite a lot of stuff left. Oh, it's like doing breath attacks constantly. It's kind of crazy. Oh, damn. The point blanks. That's kind of crazy. Alright, I guess what I'm going to do is uh, this ability here. Very cool. We'll use that to kind of shoot into those. Alright, over here, I think we'll probably just drop this on the range forces. <coughs> I'm going to need to, I think, because otherwise I'm not going to have enough to take care of them. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's taken out the majority of the army. I think we, we had to basically use that to win. That was pretty cool though, <laughs> watching the moon just disintegrate like that. <coughs> there we go. We won. I'm gonna try and kill off these guys. We're gonna turn off guard mode. And hopefully we can get plenty of kills in after the fact. That was awesome. That was completely awesome. I'm going to make sure we're chasing them. Maybe we can catch up to some of them. We've got such good range. Not on those Gisales. I wonder if we catch up. 
Okay, cool. Alright, let's speed things up. The Doom players are doing a great job anyway. Nearly caught up to those swordsmen. Nice. Nipping at their heels. We want to do as much damage as possible. Obviously this wasn't a settlement battle, technically, it, because they sallied forth. Uh, one thing I might do though, just before we let this go, is that we may as well drop this in front. And when that's done, we can also drop this in front. And that allowed us to catch up as well. That was really good, actually. <laughs> Perfect. Very cool. Okay. And there we have it. Beautiful. That was super successful. Obviously, the Warp Storm rocket kind of helped us massively deal with the ranged forces, which all stacked up on top of each other. So that was nice. This is what I was hoping from it from them sallying forth was that we could get a really clean open field battle and we can enslave them for food or we can use re replenishment I think we're gonna enslave them for food awesome okay and unfortunately guys it has been my time so what we're gonna do in the next episode is attack Magretta. Hopefully take it. And then we'll look to wipe out Vistalia once and for all. Fantastic. I've really, really enjoyed the start of this campaign. Hopefully you guys have as well. Make sure, if you haven't already, to subscribe. And I don't ask often, but this is the start of the campaign. And if you want to keep up with it, make sure to turn notifications on so you can get every episode um delivered to you but there you go that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode goodbye Murder, death.